Cisco Threat Response, VPN Filter. Now this attack was uh, pretty cool, right? Uh, it uh, had Talos working around the clock for uh, several months, working with public and private threat intelligence partners, uh, law enforcement, et cetera, right? And we know that this was really focused on, uh, you know, small office, home office type uh, devices like Linksys, uh, Netgear, for example. Uh, we also know that the malware was multi-stage, right? It uh, both uh, supported uh, intelligent collection as well as had destructive capabilities. Um, and so it was, it was pretty cool. So this is a fairly comprehensive um, analysis as Talos always does. And you can see there's a lot of good rich data here that you may want to research um, and truly understand uh, how the adversary went about their business, right? What we're going to do, though, is we're going to quickly determine whether or not this is in our organization. Do we have devices plugged in? Those small office, home office, maybe they should never be plugged in, right? But we don't know, so we're going to plug in. We're going to grab these first stage uh, C2 domains and IPs, and we're going to paste it in Cisco Threat Response, right? And Cisco Threat Response is going to do all that magical stuff, right? It's going to Look in all the modules that we've added, things like, you know, email security, uh, web or umbrella, right? DNS type data. You've got endpoint um, and, 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 and more, right? And, and what it's going to do is it's going to reach out to see uh, what we have seen in the organization. Now, very quickly, we can see we've got a couple of devices, okay? And... We also have um, a, a domain that we certainly can see is red, which is malicious, and that's the toknowall.com. I'm dragging it there. And so we're gonna focus on that one device for now, right? And maybe we'll find more information, but really um, what, what's gonna end up happening here is that we're gonna see some interesting stuff around this 192.168.4.213 that both talk to, to that photobucket.com, uh, as well as that toknowall.com. So, and at the top there, you can see targets, observables, right? You've got indicators, domains, file hashes, IP addresses. So a lot of good information. We're looking at that photobucket.com. We can show or see at this point, it's a clean domain. We can see the judgments and verdicts and sightings. We can also very quickly pivot into uh, specifics around that domain. Here we can see toknowall.com. And again, there's some judgments against uh, Talos has uh, had a judgment as well as umbra Umbrella. We can see that it's malicious with the verdict. And now sightings, we can see some interesting information here, right? Um, and again, this can all be used in a... Uh, uh, report at the end of this, right? When you build this out and actually articulate what took place, um, you can use a lot of the elements that we're seeing here. And I'll show you how we pull that together in a sec. So what we've done is right from Cisco Threat Response, and that's the beauty with the tool, right? Is the tool allows you to pivot into other platforms as needed. So not only can you research and understand what took place, but you can also take action within Cisco Threat Response. You actually don't have to go into Umbrella or you don't have to go into Endpoint AMP. You can actually do it right from the Cisco Threat Response interface. So it makes life easy, right? Um, so what we've done here is we've said, well, wait a minute, let's look at that toknowall.com and find out a little bit more about what uh, Cisco Umbrella knows about this particular domain. And, and very quickly, we can see it's in the block list. We can see it's uh, associated with an APT. We can see that it's suspicious uh, based on its secure rank two uh, findings. We see the DNS queries over time. That's interesting data. We can see who registered the, the domain itself, what other domains they may have registered. We can see the requester distribution. So where the... Uh, requests for that domain are coming from. So for example, if you have a .ru and most of the requests are coming from .us, well, there might be something up there, right? That might be an indication right there 
that suggests something might be malicious taking place, right? Because you would expect that most of the requests for .ru will be coming from .ru. So you can see the breakdown here. You see Ukraine, China, United States. You see associated samples if they existed. You can see the current categorization as malware and the timeline, right? So you can see we added APT to that as well. You see some dates, right? When it expires, when it was registered. Here we can also see features around TTL, country code, uh, country count, ASNs, right? So the ISP that has or owns that IP. Continue to go down, see prefixes, you've got location count, uh, geo, etc. And what's really cool in Umbrella, they've done a really good job of documenting, right? So if you're not sure about something, you can always pivot into the uh, Umbrella Help, uh, which provides a, a tremendous uh, information, not only about the product ex itself, but also how to configure things, right? So you can see our fast flux candidate, it shows us false. We've got security categories, right? You got secure rank, page rank, uh, autonomous system uh, number score, prefix score, and uh, I'm, not, I'm not breaking uh, up every one of these. There's other videos that I have where we talk a little bit about some of this in more detail, but um, but it's all a lot of good information if uh, while doing your analysis, right? If you really want to truly understand what took place, a lot of times. As analysts, we're so quick to say, here's what the indicators suggest, and therefore, this is what I need to focus on. And, and you're right, we probably should look at those, but there's much more information that we might stumble upon during our investigation or analysis, right? That started with a domain, and now we've got four other domains that are bad. Here we pivoted quickly into the autonomous system number and any information that we may have gotten there. There's DGA detection. You see IP addressing here, first scene, last scene. Um, you can see secure rank. So this is su suspicious rank for the domain um, itself. And uh, you can see it's a minus 100. So a lot of good information. Actually, there's some really cool information as we scroll down as well. And one of those is called co-occurrence. Now, co-occurrences, and this helps us truly understand the attack infrastructure. And you can see photobucket.com is part of this. So what co-occurrence means is that either shortly before or shortly after I went to toknowall.com, I was at these other domains, right? So this, is, this might be, you know, you go to, maybe you go to toknowall first, and that could be the exploit kit server, for example. And very quickly after that, you go to another site and that could be the C2, right? So the relationships between these domains and the requests over a period of time uh, provide some interesting insight, right? That you may not get otherwise. And you can see at the bottom there, we've got related domains. So Umbrella Investigate, if you don't have it, have a look at it, test it out or trial it. But it prevent, like I said, it provides a, a, a tremendous... Uh, value to anybody that does analysis. So from here, we go back to activity search. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back in time a little bit. So we're gonna go back seven days and we're gonna see what we, you know, what we might have seen with this particular um, asset. And, and, and we can see that there's that 192.168.4.213. So we know the internal IP, we know the external IP. We also know the action taken was blocked. So that's a good thing, but we still have a device that's compromised, right? It's still uh, been uh, uh, taken advantage of and we have to remediate that for sure. But what's interesting here is that we know it's been blocked. We know the external and internal IP address. We know the identity. We know the categories associated with it. And if we look at date and time, don't you find something very interesting there? So date and time itself provides interesting information alone. So say the action wasn't blocked. Well, that's fine, right? And you can see we can filter, we can view the domain. We've already showed you a little bit about that. But when we look at the date and time, look at that, 3.47 a.m. every day. So that connection attempt was, you know, it's programmatic, right? It's trying to get out at a specific 
time. So even if it wasn't blocked, that might be something that makes us want to focus a little more or investigate further because that's maybe a behavior that shouldn't exist. And here we get a quick view, you know, of what's blocked, recent trends. Um, it's just a nice little visual. You can see top destinations um, on the the middle uh, left there, right here. Yeah. And then top security categories broken down. And then inside we've got uh, uh, for Chicago uh, marketing office, we can see some recent activity that's taking place there. And that doesn't necessarily mean um, that uh, something bad is happening per se, right? So we've got some good information that we picked up along the way, right? And now we, what we want to do is probably fill in our um, kill chain worksheet, right? Let's fill in the data, um, put a lot of this great information into a report so then we could submit it uh, and, and maybe pull that asset off the network or make recommendations uh, in regards to what we want to do. So where do we get all this information to fill in this kill chain uh, report? Well, obviously we got a, a big chunk of information from Talos. We also got some information from Cisco Threat Response. We used Umbrella in this case. Not a lot of tools, right? Um, but we were able to very quickly find that. So I'm going to show you where did I get this information to fill this in. So we don't have things like computer name, operating system, vulnerable applications per se, right? But we know the host IP address was 192.168.4213. We know associated uh, domains and, and, and a lot of information we got. We know it's an active exploit. We know it's VPN filter. So you see that we're using a blog. It doesn't have to be Cisco's blog either, right? It doesn't really matter. We see domains contacted. Well, we can see that visually here and we can also see it in Umbrella. We also see uh, IP addresses that might been, might have been contacted. All good information. And then finally, we've got recommendations. Recommendations were already built out by uh, Cisco Talo. So keep device firmware up to date. Remove devices that can't be updated. And I added another one here, right? Leverage NAC to control access to the environment itself. They shouldn't maybe be there, right? So pull them out. Anyways, pretty easy stuff. I love doing the analysis. Check out Cisco Threat Response.